This is going to be quite the week. We are still living in Noah's cargo trailer here in the Florida Keys and last night we had an incredible time fishing with our friend Neil. We took a boat out at night, waited for the tides to shift and brought in a ton of mangrove snapper. It is so amazing and beautiful to be out on the water and experience firsthand the type of abundance here. Wow, he's beautiful. You can make what they call ladyfish balls. They eat them in Taiwan, but other than that, uh, they're just so mushy. They're so soft that they just fall apart. You can't fillet them or anything. In just a few hours, we brought up maybe eight mangrove snapper and a whole lot more that weren't big enough to keep. Also, our friend Neil, who works with my brother Noah, has been so gracious and wonderful when sharing his information and knowledge. He understands so much about the different saltwater species here, what they feed on, what they want, how they want the bait presented. He has just helped us learn an incredible amount. Anyway, there are some really incredible things happening this week that I'm excited to share, but for right now, I am going to clean the snapper that we brought in late last night. We didn't get in until about midnight, and we threw the snapper on ice, and I'm gonna take care of filleting them and cleaning them right now. I grew up fishing and have always had a love for fish, but I never actually liked eating it. Until a few years ago when I made the intentional decision to work towards growing closer to my food and gaining awareness of what I believe it means to be a living, breathing part of nature, which of course I'm still working on. So I learned to like fish, mostly because it was a way for me to be a direct part of that cycle and the appreciation and the very real exchange in energy and life. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> so I am heading about 30 minutes north to the Florida Keys Bird Rehabilitation Center. At least I'm pretty sure that's the name of it. <laughs> I decided to volunteer for the day. Um, the birds here are beautiful and super cool. And I can only imagine with all of the human impact here that they might be having a hard time. So, you're good. It's kind of tricky getting out of here because we're tucked away and like, we're tucked away behind a tourist attraction, basically. And then all of the workers live very closely together. But every time that we want to leave, <laughs> I have to drive through this tourist attraction. And I know everybody here is used to it, but I'm not. And I have a giant freaking van, so I always feel a little awkward. Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh. I know they have a whole, like, hospital, obviously it's a rehabilitation center, um, but I'm so curious to learn about what types of procedures they do and how they work on something so seemingly fragile as birds. I don't know how much I will be allowed to film, and I typically stay on the uh, more, like, conservative end of the filming aspect because I don't ever want to be disrespectful. I did not clear any of my countertops, so I'm gonna have things rolling off. Just like with almost any other volunteer opportunity with animals, a lot of the work involves cleaning. But I learned an incredible amount about how they work with the different species. I learned how they force feed and the steps they take with birds who come in extremely malnourished. And many of the birds are in that hospital due to the impacts from us humans, from being negligent or careless with fishing tackle or feeding them fish with exposed bone and so much more. And this is Fred. She is a yellow naped Amazon and the boss around here. Thank you so much. Hi. So much personality. So much. <laughs> Rar. Does this feel intrusive? I'm sorry. Oh, she loves attention. Really? She acts like she doesn't, but like as soon as you leave a room, she's like screaming for you. Fred belonged to Laura Quinn, who was the founder of the Florida Keys Wild Bird Sanctuary, and she is now taken care of and loved by many of the interns and workers there. Her favorite movie is Jurassic Park, which also means she loves to roar like dinosaurs. 
She is sassy and intelligent. And while getting to know Fred, I also learned about how detrimental illegal wildlife trade is for exotic species like her, something I knew very little about. Well, we're going for a walk with a box. And in this box, there are two morning doves that have been rehabilitated and they are ready to be released. So at the end of my shift today, they let me take them to this really beautiful park and I get to release these two morning doves. How cool. This rehabilitation center is funded only through donations and grants. It is a lot of nonprofit work for them. So if you feel inspired at all to send them a small donation, I'll make sure to leave the link below. They are the most wonderful people doing really cool work. Super quick turnaround. I got home, made some pico, blackened some fish, just got done chopping up some cilantro because we are all doing a fish taco night with the snapper that we all um, caught just a few nights ago and some wahoo that our friend Jeff had and gifted us. So tonight's taco night. <laughs> <laughs> this one got real crispy. That one got real crispy, Linnea? Mm -hmm. I feel like, I feel like I'm mom. Like, <laughs> Find a bar right now, yeah. Oh, oh wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I did not expect this. Every time I have traveled to Florida in the past, I've been very ready to leave after about one week. But this time is so different. And I think this mostly has to do with not only the amazing people and community, but the very easy access to nature as well. So our friend Jeff, he just lives like, just down, I basically walk to his house every day. Um, he just dropped off some coconuts and some of the cutest little bananas I've ever seen. And I am going to grab a coconut and enjoy one. And I'm just so grateful for good people. Look at this. Do you want to help me open a coconut? This machete is not that sharp. We're close, Akila. We're close, girl. Thanks. I have a little coconut exposed. I'm going to try to chop the 
top off. Watch. Oh, that was perfect. Holy cow. That was freaking perfect. Oh my goodness. Kayla, do you see that? I did a really good job. I didn't even waste any of the juice. All right, it took us a while, but we got there. <laughs> Yummy. Little by little. Go, no, tip it on the side. This is what I would do. And kind of do like that, and then peel it. Because once you've got like strips, it actually peels pretty well. It's a really pretty fish. Josiah just caught this log, so we're inspecting it. Ooh. Oh my gosh, it's moving. How cute. I mean, that's adorable. Oh my. Spider crab. Do you want to tell us about this crab? Yeah, I do want to tell them about this crab. Um, <laughs> so this crab does this thing when you try Stop! <laughs> Linnea hates it. I really don't. Well, then let's see if we can get it to... Ew. Anyway, she thinks it looks like a spider, and she really hates that. <laughs> and that might be my favorite thing about this crab. <laughs> 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 She's over there losing it. You are <laughs> laughing. such an older brother. You need to say that to every one of your tours. About spider crab. Look, he's like doing stuff with his face. That's nice. We can put him back now, probably. Alright. Bye, buddy. Be a pebble until you get to the bottom. Right? Good luck. <laughs> oh, it's so pretty. That's the biggest yellowtail we caught, though. A common question lately has been, why are you releasing the fish? Isn't it more humane to catch them for food? And we are fishing for food but there are very strict regulations around what you can and cannot keep. And this is widespread, whether we're talking about fishing or hunting or foraging. Nice catch. Wow. He's super cool. That is beautiful. He's so cool. Factors like species, location, and time of year are used to determine your daily limit and the specific measurements for the fish that you can keep. For example, mangrove snapper must be 10 inches, while mutton snapper need to be at least 18 inches. Some species right now we cannot keep at all. I got catfish. I love catfish. I think they're just like little sea puppies. <laughs> that will sting you. <laughs> they are. They sound like puppies. I didn't even get my shrimp. Nice. So it is nearly impossible to make sure that I catch a specific species of a specific size every cast, which means that, yeah, I do need to release the majority of the fish that I catch. And I am more than happy to do so because this is all to ensure that the population and species remains healthy for a balanced and thriving ecosystem. Feel free to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on next week, where you will join me on my very first fishing charter experience, which I have mixed feelings about. 
some beautiful sunrises, and a very exciting announcement. So Akil and I will see you then. But you're giving me that face. What face? The one you're giving me right now. Ew, that's going in the bloopers for sure. <laughs> that was so gross. Uh, that can't be right. I did this wrong. <laughs> I did this wrong. No, you cut that? No. Oh. Oh. I, I also cut it, but... <laughs> It was a cooperative effort. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna ignore the fact that my hook wasn't actually inside of it. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on tight, cause I'm going. No, I'm not, no, I'm not, no, I'm not, no, I'm not. I am not a very risky driver. I got home, made some peep out. <sighs> Who wants to see the cute little crab? Nobody. So beautiful. Can you move some of your fingers? Cause you're covering. Green check. Check out. This. You're covering the whole fish. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun.